Hey, Vince Riley here, CFI, double I, rotor wing, and fixed wing. Today's topic is going to be airspace. Whether you're getting ready for your private pilot check ride, preparing for a biannual flight review, or just want to brush up, this video will not only give you an easy way to remember which airspace is where, but will also help you remember your visibility and cloud clearance requirements. The designation of and altitudes of airspace we'll cover can be found in FAA Regulations Part 71. The first airspace we'll talk about real quick really doesn't apply to VFR flight. That's Class A airspace, and it begins at 18,000 feet all the way up to flight level 600, which is basically 60,000 feet. To fly into Class A airspace, you have to have an IFR clearance. Next, we'll talk about Class E airspace. A good way to remember where E airspace is, is to just remember it's everywhere from the bottom of Class A airspace all the way down to 1200 feet AGL all across the United States with a few exceptions and around some airports which have approach procedures. It goes down to 700 feet AGL. Everywhere below Class E airspace starting at the surface is Class G. One important thing to remember about Class E airspace is there's a delineation at 10,000 feet MSL, which changes visibility and cloud clearance requirements. All the cloud clearance and visibility requirements can be found on a chart in section 91.155. Here's an example of the chart. Basically, I just cut off the bottom half, which is where most of the confusion comes from when talking about airspace and cloud clearance requirements. So we're gonna talk about it for a moment because this is where most people get confused. To begin with, there's a small section for helicopters. Well, they're a special kind of people, bless their hearts, so we're not going to talk about that right now. Below that is another section, which is a remainder of the days gone by that talks about more than 1,200 feet above the surface, but less than 10,000 feet MSL. And as far as I know, I haven't been able to find any of these areas on the current VFR sectionals since 2017. So, for now, just ignore it, and what I want you to remember is Cessna 152. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. The next area below that talks about being more than 1,200 feet above the surface and at or above 10,000 feet MSL, again, I know of no areas where this applies in current VFR sectional chart. The thing I want you to remember here is F-111, as in F-111 Aardvark bomber. Additional confusion about Class G airspace comes from the chart supplement guide and current charts which still show shaded blue areas in the legend and talk about Class E above 1200 feet AGL. Again, I haven't been able to find that on any of the modern maps. As you'll see in the current VFR sectional charts, it's the shaded magenta area. That's where it goes down to 700 feet. If you're feeling nostalgic about the old days, here's an example which comes from the Salt Lake VFR sectional from 1971. It shows both magenta and blue designated Class E areas. There were actually VFR corridors above 1,200 feet and other areas through the mountains to allow pilots to fly VFR, but again, those have all been removed from the map. If you can find one, please put it in the comments below and let me know where you found it. Since I already showed you the chart from Part 91, I want to talk about Class G airspace first. At some point in your flying career, you're probably going to hear a question that sounds a lot like this. Your DPE or instructor will point to a spot on a VFR sectional and ask, What is the visibility and cloud clearance requirements when your brother's cousin's aunt, three times removed, is drunk flying her grocery cart VFR at 10,100 feet? This is an easy question, and here's how you'll remember it. Anytime you're less than 1,200 feet AGL, regardless of the MSL altitude, your visibility requirement is one statute mile clear of clouds. And at nighttime, it's three statute miles visibility with basic cloud clearance. And we're going to talk about what basic cloud clearance is in just a minute. So we don't need to talk about cloud clearance and visibility requirements in Class A airspace because that's only for IFR traffic. So remember, Class E airspace is everywhere down to 1,200 feet AGL and around some airports down to 700 feet AGL or the surface. So now let's add in our Class G airspace our Class C airspace, our Class D airspace, and Class B airspace, and our surface area, Class E. Let's add a few clouds, because we're going to talk about our visibility and cloud clearance requirements. 
first, we'll talk about Class E airspace above 10,000 feet MSL. And remember, I said to remember F111. So above 10,000 feet MSL, your visibility requirements is five statute miles, while cloud clearance requirements, these were the ones come from in the F111, 1,000 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and one statute mile horizontally. F111 is five mile visibility, 1,000 below, 1,000 above, and one statute mile horizontal. So below 10,000 feet MSL is where we get Cessna 152, and this applies to all controlled airspace below 10,000 feet MSL with one exception, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Below 10,000 feet, you're required to maintain three statute miles visibility and basic cloud clearance. The C in the Cessna 152, the third letter of the alphabet, help you remember the three statute miles, cloud clearance is 500 feet below, 1,000 above, and 2,000 feet horizontal. Again, that's where Cessna 152 comes from. This cloud clearance is referred to as basic cloud clearance. That's how you're going to remember your visibility and cloud clearance requirements below 10,000 feet MSL. You just have to remember where to put each of the numbers. The Class G airspace visibility and cloud clearance requirement during the day is one statute mile clear of clouds. At night, it's Cessna 152, just like the rest of controlled airspace. Three statute miles and basic cloud clearance. So what do you think the visibility and cloud clearance requirement is in Class C airspace? That's right, Cessna 152. So what do you think the visibility and cloud clearance requirement is in Class D airspace? You're right again, Cessna 152. So what do you think the visibility and cloud clearance requirement is in surface E airspace when it's active? That's right, Cessna 152. So what do you think the visibility and cloud clearance requirement is in Class B airspace? Well, here's the exception. It's still three statute miles, but it's clear of clouds. In other words, you can be a foot outside the cloud and meet the requirements for Class B airspace. The reason for this is because to enter Class B airspace, first of all, you have to have a clearance. And second, they'll tell you to maintain VFR. And lastly, you have a transponder with ADS-B. So they will know exactly where you are to keep you clear of IFR traffic and to give you traffic advisories. It's really that simple. In controlled airspace below 10,000 feet MSL, it's Cessna 152, three miles visibility and basic cloud clearance, with the exception of Class B airspace, which is clear of clouds. In Class G airspace at night, it reverts to the same requirements. So really, you only have to remember F-111, Cessna 152, and then one mile clear of clouds during the day for Class G. And then in Class B, again, clear of clouds. So let's test what we've learned. Let's say you're right here at 800 feet AGL. What type of airspace are you in and what is your visibility and cloud clearance requirement? If you said Class G airspace, you're correct. And your visibility and cloud clearance requirements during the day? Right, one mile in clear clouds. How about for night? Three miles in basic cloud clearance, 500 below, 1,000 above, and 2,000 horizontal. Okay, well, what if you're right here at 3,600 feet MSL? What type of airspace are you in, and what are your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Remember, the VFR sectional tells you just about everything you need to know about controlled airspace. The bottom of the Class B airspace in this area begins at 7,000 feet. The top of the Class D airspace ends at 3,500 feet MSL. If you said Class E airspace, you're right. And your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? That's right three miles and basic cloud clearance. How about if you're right here at 12,000 feet MSL? What type of airspace are you in and what is your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? That's right, Class B airspace. And your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? 
I hope you said three statute miles visibility and clear of clouds. Let's look at a few more examples. What if you were here at 5100 MSL? What class of airspace are you in and what is your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Remember, the VFR sectional is very helpful and shows the top and bottom of this Class C airspace. Correct, Class E airspace. And what is your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Correct again, Cessna 152, three statute miles visibility, basic cloud clearance, which is 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontally. All right, one more example. What if you're right here at 11,000 feet MSL? What class airspace are you in? And what are your visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Now you're getting it. Class E airspace above 10,000 feet MSL. And the visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Remember, F-111 above 10,000 feet MSL, five miles visibility, 1,000 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and one statute mile horizontally from any clouds. If this was helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave your comments below. I'll also provide a link for two other videos I've made that discuss determining your position using a VOR and load factor. Those are other areas that people really struggle with. Also, if you'd like another topic discussed, you can leave a suggestion in the comments below, and I'll try and make a video for that too.